Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. It's time for the Detroit area's largest used book and media sale, known as Bookstock. The week-long event raises money for local education and literacy projects. More than 300,000 donated books, DVDs, CDs, magazines, audiobooks, and vinyl records are going to be on sale at bargain prices beginning April 22nd at Laurel Park Place in Livonia. Another highlight is the Bookstock BEST Awards presented to Detroit fourth graders who write the top essays about their favorite book characters. Bookstock is presented by the Jewish Community Relations Council in partnership with several nonprofit groups. Joining me now is Bookstock's honorary co-chair, Neil Rubin from the Detroit News, along with Chartreuse Cargill, who was last year's student essay winner, and her literacy coach at Garvey Academy, Deborah Montgomery. Thank you all for being here on American Black Journal. Delighted. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so one of my favorite events every year, Bookstock. Uh, talk, talk about the idea of getting used uh, media, selling it, and using it to try to encourage literacy efforts. It's the best kind of recycling, yeah, if you right? ask me. You know, we're taking <laughs> used books, helping people to read mm -hmm. with the money we raise selling used books, and ideally, hey, they can come back and be customers. Right, right. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what year is this? Uh, book this is reminding? the 16th year. Okay. And kind of astonishing, it just keep it you know the boulder keeps rolling downhill faster and faster <laughs> we're probably going to hit 2 million dollars this year is that right in yeah. sales in sales right uh, and the books and the CDs and the DVDs they just come from people who are tired of those things in their house i guess right uh, there's, <laughs> there's a you. lot of that and then it becomes <laughs> i think now it becomes a badge of honor for mm -hmm. some people. They will tell me, hey, I made my Bookstock donation. <laughs> you know, I don't think they're like stealing from their neighbors to get books to donate. Right. But I think people more and more are understanding that books don't belong in the basement, they belong in people's laps. Right, right, so. right. Um, uh, Chartreuse, uh, I wanna ask you about uh, the essay you wrote last year and the book that you read uh, that inspired that essay. Well, it's just all of her books, because my favorite... Mm, sorry. <coughs> <laughs> that's okay. My favorite book character is Junie B. Jones. Oh, Junie B. Jones. That's who you wrote the, the essay about. Yes. Okay. She has lots of books and other things to read. And tell, tell me how you got interested in Junie B. Jones. I got interested in her when actually my teacher, Ms. Montgomery, introduced me to her. Yeah, and have you read all of her books or just most of them? Most of them. Most of them. What did you write in your essay about her? I wrote about her personality because she can be funny <laughs> and sometimes very serious. Yeah, yeah. Or just really concerned me. Right, right. No, my kids, uh, my kids were big fans of uh, Junie B. Jones. <laughs> as well. Uh, talk about how this sort of integrates with the literacy efforts uh, at Garvey. Well, you know, just the opportunity that we give children to actually write about what they're reading. Mm -hmm. And what I loved about Chartreuse is she was able to make their personal connection. That's really what you want students to do. Yeah. Connect with the characters in the book so that they establish a lifelong journey of reading. Yeah. Uh, talk about teaching young people though to write essays about what they what they read that's uh, I, I sort of remember doing that I guess in school but uh, talk about that process well you know the favorite the kids most favorite thing to read is actually their own writing is that and right when you incorporate writing in your classroom it excites them they love sharing out they love being authors <laughs> they love publishing their work so uh -huh. when teachers really incorporate writing Reading just kind of comes naturally in the classroom. Yeah, and are there other things that you're doing during the year to sort of encourage that self-publishing? Uh, oh, yes, it's a continual process, especially in Detroit Public Schools. The past few years, we have definitely been pushing reading, writing, and just trying to get the students to really push through. Of course, our truth is easy because she's so well-rounded, <laughs> but the other students are really taking a liking to the opportunities that they've been given. Yeah, so Chartreuse, which is your favorite, reading? or writing? Writing, actually. Yeah, why? <laughs> because I like to, Jenny B. Jones lets you grow with her. So I like to write about how she helped me grow. Oh, yeah, uh, how old were you when you started reading Jenny B. Jones? Um, nine. Nine, okay, and how old are you now? 
Eleven. Eleven. Okay, so that's two years. That's a long. That's a long time that uh, she's been with you, teaching you, teaching you about things. Um, uh, uh, talk more about the the sort of whole idea behind uh, uh, Bookstock and sort of where you guys came up with this. Well, it's actually kind of the second go around. The Brandeis University Women's Alumni Club had a long time used book sale in Southfield, mm -hmm. and frankly, you know they were getting older and the books weren't getting any lighter and they just gave it up. Yeah. And uh, the people who jump-started book stock are just a bunch of friends, basically, um, who looked at each other and said, hey, that was a great thing. I wonder if we could bring that back. Mm. And my involvement actually started when I wrote a column about the first okay. one. Okay, okay. Um, you know, in the Detroit News. And, uh, and they were hoping to get maybe 15 or 20,000 books yeah. <laughs> for people to choose from. And again, it has just kept growing, just and the dedication is ferocious. It's entirely volunteer. Nobody gets paid. Wow. And I think as much to keep ourselves interested as anything, we have all kinds of different activities and specials throughout the week, uh -huh. um, trying to bring people back, frankly. We get a big splash on the opening Sunday, you know, which is April 22nd. Um, with our pre-sale, it's the only time it costs to get in. $20 gets you in the door from 8.15 to 11, and you get first pick. And the collectors come out. Pro tip, do not stand between the cookbooks and the cookbook collectors. It's a hazardous thing. <laughs> Is that thing the really hot that spot, right? <laughs> yeah, more than anything else. Uh, and uh, Anyway, you know, Tuesday we've got the best awards, and yeah. from 3 to 9 p.m., teachers. It's Teacher Appreciation Day. Right. Teachers get 50% off. Yeah. That's uh, really great. Yeah. You know, bookstockmi.org, we've got the entire listing of all the specials and all the extra reasons to come out. One key is, obviously, we can't display 300,000 books right. at once. <laughs> right. So we're putting new stuff out every all day the it's time, not like all yeah. the good stuff is gone on sunday there's fresh merchandise all week long yeah yeah um i, I, I talk some about the literacy projects that benefit from this uh, which which programs uh, are those they're far reaching the oakland literacy council has been one since the beginning sometimes it's very targeted um a, you know we funded book clubs in inkster uh -huh. uh, books for uh high school seniors in Detroit, uh, refurbished the library at Earhart School in Detroit. There's a long list. Yeah. And when you're, the, you know, when you're sort of this small, you know, nimble is the word businesses always <laughs> want to use, we can look at a problem and say, hey, all it takes we is a couple thousand that. dollars right. to solve that. <laughs> right. Hey, we put on a show. We've got a couple thousand Right. Dollars. We can do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Chartreuse, are you going to enter the essay contest this year as well? Um, sure. You are? Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to write about this time? Um, I'm not sure. You're not sure yet? What are, what are some of the books that you've been reading in the last year? Diary of the Rimp Wimpy Kid. Uh, my kids love those too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and just a lot of other books. Yeah, yeah. Do you get a lot of uh, students who want to enter this contest particularly? Oh, certainly. Yeah. Well, the high interest <laughs> reads right now, the kids love to respond to the characters because, again, they can make those connections. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's very, it's a very fun project. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, the future of Bookstocks. So one of the things I think is really interesting about this is that it's people buying books and CDs and DVDs, hard media. Think about the ways in which people are sort of walking away from that, and yet every year you have this event where people mob them all to buy this old world media. That's sort of that's sort of ironic, I think. Yeah, well, and I'm not gonna lie, we were a little bit concerned. We talked about this a few years ago. You know, are we gonna become outmoded? Yeah. And no, there's a lot of people still who want to hold books in their hands. Yeah. They want to turn the pages. I was look at actually planning a column in that regard and uh, was looking up a few things last week. Regular books, printed material, is still about 65% of the book market. Is that right? That's a slightly exaggerated figure for various reasons that are way too boring to get into here. <laughs> Ebooks tend to get undercounted. Okay. But still, much of the book industry is still what we think of as the books that are going away. Right. And when you think $2 million, a cumulative in all these years of book stock, 
that's mostly one and three dollars at a time. Right. That's a lot of books. That's that a lot. Through. That's a lot of books. And I, I would imagine that in addition to collectors who want these books, you're also just getting people who who still just like to read. Well, that's just it. Um, I stock up on mysteries for my mother-in-law. I get a bunch <laughs> of stuff for myself. And I donate books every year. But I'm kind of under strict orders at home to stop adding to the <laughs> Quit accumulation of books. books. And, yeah. uh, stacking them up. So I confess, there have been years where I've just kept the books in the trunk of my car yeah. <laughs> and not admitted that they exist <laughs> and just sort of brought them into the house one yeah. at a time. Yeah, all right. Well, book stock am I? Yes. Uh, April 22nd. It kicks off at Laurel Place Park in Livonia. Yes, uh, six mile just east of 275. Yeah, yeah. And uh, good luck to you again, Chartreuse, in the essay contest. And uh, keep up the good work at, at Garvey. Thank you. Thank you all for being here.